The bet side of the team is back for week six in college football and week five in the NFL. Boy, oh boy, the seasons are already starting to fly by. Ben Heisler with Peter Dewey, Donovan Smoot, Ian McMillan, and Reed Wallach. Good to have everybody back with us for our early leans for the week. In case you're new to the program, we go through it. We break down the slate for some of our favorite plays early on in the week. Occasionally, you might see some of these numbers move over the course of the week. It's not just because we're that sharp. It's just sometimes the lines tend to move. But we always have a lot of fun with these games and going through them. And so far, it's been uh, a nice week for us, especially on the NFL side, going 5-0 and against the spread, 3-2 and last week over in college, currently 13-6 and against the spread in our best bets here for the NFL. College, 11-13-1, and but we're slowly on the up and up. So, Ian, I'm going to start with you on the NFL side for this week as we go around the horn. You're looking at a matchup in the NFC North between the Lions and the Vikings. Vikings are eight-point home favorites against the winless Lions. Total in that game sitting at 49-and-a-half. Is this the week that the Lions perhaps get off the schneid, or is it Minnesota's opportunity to bounce back after a, a home loss last week against Cleveland? Yeah, I think the spread's actually a, a tough call. So I'm actually looking at the total. I'm going over 49 and a half, my favorite over bet of the week. I think we're getting some value on this number based on the score of both teams' games last week. But make no mistake about it, these are two of the worst defenses in the entire NFL. We should see a ton of points in this one. The Vikings rank 28th in the NFL in opponent yards per play at 6.1, and the Lions rank 31st, that's second last in that stat, allowing teams to gain an average of 6.6 yards per play. And when it comes to opponent points per play, the Lions rank dead last. Teams are averaging over half a point per offensive play against the Lions. That's not very good. So I'll take the over in this one. It's my favorite over bet of the week. Lions, Vikings, over 49 and a half. We also saw the Chicago Bears in week four move the ball up and down the field against the Detroit Lions and the Bears offense ranked dead last in the NFL in yards per play as well. So good opportunity to go ahead and grab that over before the line possibly moves up. Uh, Donovan, let me go to you. The Green Bay Packers are on a bit of a roll after a tough start to the year. They are on the road this week to Cincinnati against the 3-1 and one Bengals. Packers three and a half point favorites on the road with a total of 50. So who do you like here? Yeah, I, listen, I like Green Bay and, you know, exactly what you said. If you throw out the first game of, of the, um, if you throw out the first game of the season, right, it was an aberration for Green Bay. If you look at their last three, they're three and zero against the spread. They're seventh in the league in in run defense. Their defense is, is uh, only allowing about twenty one points a game. I obviously like Aaron Rodgers more than I like Joe uh, Joe Burrow. And so, if you're talking about you know Burrow versus Rodgers, I'm going to take Rodgers. And as an away favorite. In Aaron Rodgers' time, the Packers are 55%. They cover at a 55% clip as an away favorite. So, you know, I really like this spot for Green Bay. No doubt about it. And again, anytime that uh, Aaron Rodgers gets an opportunity to only get three and a hook on the road against maybe a bit of an upstart team, it's a good opportunity to jump on board. Peter, you're up next. You're going with a matchup between the Chargers and the Browns this week. Uh, almost a, a bit of a coin flip game right now. The Chargers plus one over at WinBet Sportsbook with a total at 47. Uh, both these teams coming off of, I don't want to call them impressive wins. Certainly the Chargers knocking off the undefeated Raiders last night in SoFi Stadium. The Browns going on the road and beating the Vikings last week as well. So two teams coming off of a win. Uh, how do you handicap this one? Yeah, this one, Ben, I'm, I'm loving the, the Chargers in this one. They're one-point dogs, minus 105 on the money line. And this is one where I'm not going to go too deep into the stats, I don't think. I just think the Chargers are playing better football right now, and that is, for me, in this game, when it's a toss-up like this, that matters the most. They're coming off two huge wins for them in the AFC West. They beat the Chiefs at Arrowhead, and then they beat the Raiders at home. Those are going to loom very large in their chances of making the playoffs. They have a chance to really make a statement this week against a Browns team that is most likely also going to be in the playoffs in the AFC. And, you know, the Chargers right now, they, their pass defense has been fantastic. They're top five in the league, and the Browns have really struggled to throw the ball. They only scored 14 points against a bad Minnesota defense last week. I don't know if they're going to be able to just run the ball enough and, and beat the Chargers into submission and win the game. I just don't think the Chargers offense is going to allow that to happen. And then my last thing, Kevin Stefanski's teams are one and three against the spread as a road favorite. I'm going with the Chargers this one. I think they win it straight up. All right, very interesting call. Reed, I'm going to go to you. You decided to go ahead and get the wagering on the NFL started as early as possible with the New York Jets going on the road 
very far out in the road. They're going to London to take on uh, Ian's Atlanta Falcons. Right now, the Jets plus three and a half in that matchup. Jets getting their first win of the year. In fact, you had talked about uh, doing a, a money line parlay for both the Giants and the Jets last week. Both of those ended up coming through for you. Are, are you willing to go back to the Jets uh, again for this week when they uh, travel to Tottenham Hotspur Stadium? Yeah, absolutely. I'm all over the Jets here. I got three and a half. It's at three now at win bet, but I still like them. And I can't get to this number at all with Atlanta. I make this game close to a pick. Again, neutral field, Atlanta outside the top 25 in both rushing and passing this defensive success rate. So this Jets offense that looked a little bit better last week against a soft Tennessee defense. I see Zach Wilson keeping it going next week against Atlanta. Again, I can't get to this number. I'll happily take the field goal against um, an Atlanta team that they let Washington move the ball at will against them. They let up more than 30 points. So why can't Zach Wilson keep it up for a second straight week? I'm all over getting green. Yeah, plus three and a half, especially if you can get that hook over at win bet. That's a great opportunity to get the early betting started. For me, guys, it's a plain and simple pick this week. I like the 49ers at plus five and a half on the road against the only undefeated team left in the NFL. That's the Arizona Cardinals. This is a big public favorite fade of the week. Everybody's all over Arizona right now, including over at WinBet, where you can get Kyler Murray as the league MVP at plus 450. That's his highest odds of the year. Uh, right now, this is just going to be the play that everybody gravitates to, especially coming off a fairly dominant win on the road against the LA Rams. We've already seen their division odds over at WinBet come up for Arizona. They're now tied with the Rams at plus 170 to win the NFC West. Just feels like there's a little too much love right now with the Arizona Cardinals. And remember, this was a team that was projected to finish last in that division. I like Arizona to still get to the postseason, but remember San Francisco played them awfully tough back in week 16 last year. That led to Arizona fading down the stretch, ended up losing that final playoff game to, or playoff spot, I should say, to the eight and eight Chicago Bears. who really didn't deserve to be there. Uh, maybe it's an opportunity for revenge at home, but I, I just think the 49ers are still a very good football team. That's currently coming off of a stretch where nobody wants to bet on them. Before we get into our college picks, should remind all of you guys that if you're looking for any more in-depth breakdowns for all the different games that we're talking about, you can find all of those, including props, projections, more of that is all available. You can go to fansided.com slash betside. You can also be following us on social media, we are on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok just by following at BetSided. All right, time for the college slate, and we're going to go back uh, to you, Ian. You have Penn State and Iowa. The Big Ten betting in them in, in college football has been a theme for you over the course of these videos. Uh, there's not going to be a lot of points likely scored in this game. Iowa is a one-and-a-half-point favorite at home against Penn State, number three versus number four. A total in a college game of 42 and a half. Sounds like Big Ten football to me, but where do you see this game going? Yeah, first of all, I just want to make sure everyone knows that Wisconsin is officially dead to me. I took them two weeks in a row, and they looked absolutely terrible in both weeks, so I will no longer be betting on the Wisconsin Badgers. <laughs> Instead, I'm looking at the Penn State-Iowa under 42.5. It is kind of a low total for a college football game, but I'm not afraid of it. I just talked about how bad the Lions and Vikings defenses were in my NFL pick. But it's the complete opposite in this Big Ten matchup between Penn State and Iowa. Iowa ranks fourth in the country in opponent yards per play at 4.0. Penn State ranks ninth at 4.2. So this is a matchup between two of the very best defenses in the entire country. Not only that, it's not like either of these teams have an explosive offense either, especially Iowa ranks 102nd in the country in offensive yards per play. The under is also 4-1 and one for both teams heading into this week. So I'm going to ride that trend to continue this week. I mean, the Penn State-Iowa under 42.5. All right, we move on. Donovan, going back to you, we got the Red uh, the Red River game between Texas and Oklahoma. Uh, Longhorns plus three and a half in this matchup. Got a nice high total of 62 and a half. Uh, not only are you uh, looking towards your alma mater in this game, but you might sprinkle a little bit on the money line as well. Listen, I'm taking everything. I'm so, I'm so excited for this game. It has a recent graduate of the University of Texas. I want to tell all of you guys why OU sucks and why Texas is going to win this. So first off, <laughs> Oklahoma Oklahoma hasn't looked good. Um, they haven't been able to cover. The only team that they've been able to cover against is Western Carolina, who is currently 0-5. They haven't, they haven't been able to put anybody away. Um, also, Texas is going to win this game for two reasons, and really for two words. Bijan Robinson. Bijan is amazing. He's averaging over 6.2 yards a carry. He has four games already with over 100 yards rushing. 
Um, if you saw the Texas uh, TCU game, you know that Texas and Sark, their game plan is basically turn around and give it to to Bijan and let him go to work. And that's not a bad game plan. And so I, I expect Texas to to ride Bijan to a victory. Also, I'm taking the over on this. If you look at the last five games, the all, all of these games are shootouts. The last five games have gone like this. 98 points, 61 points, 66 points, 93 points, 53 points. This is this is a shootout. This is this is a game waiting for points to be scored. So I'm taking I'm taking the points. I'm taking the Longhorn. Taking the points, taking UT in the rivalry game. Peter, let me go next to you. Uh, a little bit of uh, SEC action this week. You have Kentucky at minus two and a half against the LSU Tigers. Total in that game feels a tad bit low to me, uh, considering all the points that uh, we're normally used to seeing out of LSU, but uh, they've had their inconsistencies this year. Total in that game sits at 51. Uh, Kentucky coming off uh, a, a nice a nice start to the year for them as well. So who do you like here? Yeah, I'm going to roll the Wildcats in this one, Ben. Kentucky's coming off a huge win against Florida in week five. And honestly, right now, LSU, they're coming off a horrible loss for them against Auburn. They needed to win that game if they wanted any chance of competing in the, um, in the SEC this year. I feel like LSU, their, their season's kind of reeling right now, and they're going to face a Kentucky defense that's fifth in the country against FBS schools and yards per game. Um, they've been riding their running back, uh, Chris Rodriguez all season long and LSU allows over 121 rushing yards per game. I really like the Wildcats this one. I just think their defense is too good um, for LSU in this game. Kentucky's four and one against the spread. They're at home and they have a huge matchup with Georgia next week. I feel like if they win this game, they got to be feeling pretty good going into that one. So I'm going to take the, the Wildcats minus two and a half. All right. Wildcats once again, back in action this week. Reed, I head back to you. Looking at a matchup between East Carolina, they're getting 11 on the road against Central Florida. Nice high total in this matchup over at 67 and a half. I know that you're, you're looking on the East Carolina side. Uh, any chance that they ended up making it into your round robin picks this week as well? Because I know you love the underdogs this week. Yeah, this is definitely on the short list of teams that might get into the underdog round robin. But this is really all about the uncertainty on the UCF side. Dylan Gabriel a few weeks ago, broken collarbone. He's out for the year. So they go to a freshman, Mikey Keene, and UCF built up a 17 point, um, a 13 point lead against Navy last week, but let up 17 on answer to lose. Um, they were without running back Isaiah Bowser, starting wide receiver Jalen Robinson. So this is a banged up UCF side. So what number can you make for the Golden Knights against ECU, who is three and two on the year? They just hung 52 against Tulane. And their two losses aren't as bad as you'd think. They lost to a group of five stalwart in Appalachian State. And they were leading South Carolina the entire game before a buzzer beating field goal. So how, this ECU team is pretty formidable. If this was a fully healthy UCF team, I see it. But I have this game close to minus six, and that's adjusting for Gabriel out. Maybe that's not even enough adjustment. I don't know what you're getting from this UCF side. So I'll take the volatility. I'll take the unknowns. So give me ECU plus the 11 and maybe sprinkle on the money line. All right, I'll wrap this up this week with the pick that actually you won't be able to get over at WinBet on the New Jersey side just because Rutgers is in New Jersey and there's a rule about not being able to bet on teams within the state when it comes to college football. But if you have WinBet anywhere else, I really like Rutgers to bounce back. Bad loss uh, against Ohio State last week, but they get an opportunity to totally redeem themselves against the Spartans. And listen, I've written about how Michigan State has a terrific opportunity to get themselves in position to play for a Big Ten championship this year, considering that their schedule doesn't get hard until the very end of the season when some of these other teams might cancel each other out. But this is an opportunity now for Rutgers, who have been 4-1 and one against the spread over the course of the season up until the Ohio State game. Their defense up until last week have been playing really well all season long. And this is also a team that beat Mel Tucker last year 38 to 27. So even though Michigan State has brought in a lot of transfers, including Kenneth Walker, uh, who's had an outstanding year in running the ball, I think Rutgers might have their number here. And so I like them especially getting five points this week to be able to cover against Michigan State. So there you have it, our college leans, our NFL leans for week six and week five, respectively. Again, make sure you guys go ahead and give us a thumbs up here on YouTube if that's where you're watching us, as well as subscribing on our YouTube channel as well. And for plenty more content, head on over to fansided.com slash betsided. We'll talk to you guys next week.